no one ever does that. So I think that's what sets you apart. And that's why you're going from two locations to another location. Uh, congratulations on your third location. Um, no, thank you. That's, that's amazing. And you're saying that you're going to have two more at the end of the year. Hello, friends. Today, we have the honor of interviewing DJ Mali. And the reason why I'm bringing him on board is because throughout the whole pandemic, not only is he having two locations, but he's building up a third one. And on top of that, before the end of the year, he's going to have six locations. Welcome, 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 DJ Mali. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you. So tell me, tell me more about what you do. Tell me about your company. Tell me about your restaurant. Tell me everything about you. So we started in about uh, 2017. We started preparing for a restaurant business around 2016, 2015. We ran most of our recipes uh, at home, kept on working for about a year and a half. Then finally in 2017, we opened our first restaurant. Whereabouts and, uh, is your restaurant? Fresno, California, the first one. Oh, it's in California? Yes. Okay. And uh, what is it that you sell? Uh, we sell uh, fusion pizzas, which is like the Indian style pizzas and chicken wings. Indian Both style are, pizza and chicken wings. Yes, yes. Crazy, crazy. And then, so then you started with one location in California. Yes, yes. And then now you uh, you expand. When did you expand to your second one? Uh, second one we did in 2019, last yeah. year. Uh huh. Uh, we opened our second one in March, and you know, then kind of see how everything. We wanted to do the third one, then the COVID hit, so we kind of slowed down for like a month. But then we were like, hey, you know, we shouldn't be slowing down because of COVID. We ended up just kind of focusing. Because I'm a DJ by profession. And so I had my weekends booked with the DJ stuff. So now with the COVID, there's no weddings going on. So I took a break and we expanded our piece of business. And it's been better. Yes, yes. I uh, started me. watching your videos around March, you know, like how to go through the, you know, COVID, uh, how to, you know, keep up with the restaurants and stuff like that started following you. I was like, man, you know, you had a lot of great tips and we kept on doing it. And I think our sales went up about 20, 20%. 20%. This is 20% yes. pre COVID. Pre COVID. Yes. Wow. So your business actually, instead of going down, it went up. Yes. Yes. Uh, Tell me, explain, like, explain to me more about why did it go up? Why do you think it went up? Uh, what I think, I mean, since we are a local family owned business and a lot of people knew that we needed help and most of our customers, uh, they started buying gift cards. They also started, you know, just buying more pizza. And I also think pizza is like a more go-to food rather than, you know, you can't take a steak to home steak and take it home and eat it like you want it. Right. So pizza, I mean, it's a go-to food and people just came. We only did take out and delivery. That's, that was it. And we still went up 20%. It was, it was a blessing. Wow. And I guess like, can you tell me more, a little bit more about your customer avatar? Who is it that you're serving? Uh, we are uh, serving uh, mostly everyone, you know, like everybody wants to try. I mean, first when we opened the store, we thought Indian pizza was going to be for the Indian people. But no, uh, we have about 15 to 20% uh, Indian clientele where most of our customers are mixed, you know, Asians, white, Hispanic and everybody. So, and we are known for our chicken wings too. Uh, if some people don't like the curry, they come in for have a regular pizza and our chicken wings. I love that. That is so crazy. I, I really crazy. Like, uh, tell me more about how, so you started off as an Indian pizza concept and yes. then from there onward, you're like, Hey, you know what? I want to pivot a little bit more, grow your audience and to grow yes. your demand. And from there onwards, you're able to create a mass movement of people that yes. really supports your local brand. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and we work a lot of with the you know local hospitals and stuff like that. When the COVID hit, we basically was delivering to each hospital uh, for the whole staff for like two months. Um, you know, we were picking a hospital each week, and we were feeding the nurses and everything. And those people always show a lot of respect and love to back to us. You know, whenever you do good things and good things happen to you, that's the way we look at it. That is so crazy. And I think like for you to be able to kind of stay your course and not get, and, and really adapt throughout the whole COVID is really the essence of, of running the business. It's like, Throughout crises, there are definitely a lot of opportunities. And, and for uh -huh. you, during that time, you didn't give up. You didn't close your doors and you just you no, know, no, no. focus on what we do. Yes. And uh, we actually didn't uh, fire any employees either. So we, we kept all of our employees. So, you know, it's, it's, 
it, it's been great. And I think hopefully our goal is with the next two years, uh, we want to have about 10 locations. That's 10 the plan. Locations. But yes. Wow. I am excited. I'm so excited yeah. for, for us to be able to bring you back on and, you. and for you to share all your wisdom and your experience with our audience. Well, thank you. Now, I, I know like a lot of people who are our audience are stuck in a funk. They're stuck in like, how can I move forward, especially throughout this whole COVID? I think like for you, you're able to pivot and you're able to find that, that road of yours that allowed you to go plus 20% pre-COVID, what yes. advice or what experience can you share that has allowed you to, to get past this? Uh, we actually went up on our advertisement a lot too. Uh, you know, we started doing more mailers, more social media. And uh, first thing, I think you got to have a great food, which I believe you do. But the only way you could have a great food, but people have to try it to know that your food is good. So when we did open, we basically gave a lot of pieces for free to people who come in and even just to look at our menu. We still give them something when they're leaving, even a small, you know, pizza, or maybe like some chicken wings and stuff like that. So once they do try, they talk about it and that's how you get the word out, you know. And I think customer service and the food is the two main party. When you walk into a store, I mean, we, if you're not happy, we're going to give you money back. We're not going to try to say, hey, you know, you know, you got to follow that thing. It's, it's it's hard for restaurant owners to follow. That customer's always right, but, <laughs> and that's what you got to believe, right? I mean, that, that's what we believe in. And we made the Yelp top 100 restaurant to eat in America last year for 2020. Wow. Yes. That is, that's very impressive. That, I mean, that, was, that was a big achievement for us, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess like when COVID hit, did it, did it take you by surprise or did it startle you? And like, was it tough for uh, you? Yes, at, at the beginning, I was thinking about, I was like, you know, if, if like the way they were closing in dining, I was like, hopefully we could, you know, keep our employees and make sure, you know, they get paid and stuff like that. And we break even and that, that should do it for the next few months. So, you know, all this goes away. But I guess COVID was here to stay for at least a year, it seems like it. So, mm -hmm. but no, it, it was, you know, it got, got us worried, but I think you can't just keep thinking negative. We just kept on positive and pushing it forward so it turned out to be good and so you're like you know what after a few months you you're gonna just make sure you focus on the quality of your food make sure that you get your yes. food into the hands of the people so then that way you know your stuff is good as long as people try it they'll come in you focus yes. on yes. items that are good to travel good for packaging and good for just comfort food yes. i mean pizza and wings you can't really go yes. wrong and you and that's can. pretty much your tactic right yes Beautiful. Well, and so we, we try to keep a small menu. You know, we, we don't try to do like, yeah, you know, add a lot of different stuff to the menu. All these service, chicken wings and pizza, that's it. Okay. I, I love that. I, I love there's a golden nugget in there. Why did you choose to keep a lean menu? It's always easy. I mean, you, you can't be good at everything, right? So I would say we just got to master two food, which is pizza and the wings. And that's what we did. And so. If you don't like pizza, you come for the wings. If you like, if you don't like the wings, you come for the pizza. So, and we try, we don't want to be master of everything, right? So, and I don't think nobody can't be a master of anything. I've seen some of these restaurants like adding pasta and all other stuff. I think it's better to focus on like your main 10 items and just push those. And if you could do good on those, it's awesome. I like that. And, and the, the beauty about this is, is we, we see a lot of big corporation and chains and even some of my clients, I advise them because they have like 50 different menu items. And with that, right. there's a, you, you can't choose what to eat. And you're like, Oh my goodness, I'm just confused. And on top of that, people uh, like you, you need to make sure you are, you control your cost of goods sold and you control right. your, your items that are the most profitable items that you're serving out there. And, and that's why you see big chains, even like McDonald's, they're cutting on the items that are not making them good money they're and good margins money. when there sure. are third party apps involved. So I think like mm -hmm. that's a great strategy that you're working on. There's like two folds focusing on items that you're making really, really good at. And on top of that, it allows you to control your cost of goods sold. Do you care? To share yeah. about like how high is your cost of goods sold? It's just in range. Uh, our food cost is about 30, 30 to thirty two percent. Uh, so it, it stays around anything from thirty two to thirty three, uh, roughly, and our labor is around that thirty percent as well. 
Beautiful. The only reason this food is uh, 33%, uh, our goal is to, the way we make our pizzas is from edge to edge. So you, uh, we hide the crust. That's the, what we do with the toppings. If you go on our Yelp or anywhere you see the pictures, our goal with the chicken, whatever we put on the pizza, we hide the crust. So wow. if, we don't do, so we did that for two months. And then we started did the measurements and stuff like that. I got the food costs out and came out to be, uh, first it was under 28%. But the food cost went up 5%, but after that, our customer and our sales went sky high. So, you know, customers do care what they get from, you know, when you come to the curry pizza and even I think our large or our family size pizza contains about 100 pepperoni on it. So wow. if you get a pepperoni pizza, it has 100 pepperoni on it. Yes. Wow. No wonder you're, cause like the thing is, uh, I, I've known some pizza shops, their cost of goods solds are like 10, 20%. You know, and they really yes, go yes. lean with that. If you, if you look at a pepperoni slice, uh, you're going to see maybe what two or three pepperonis on it. So, or he slice, I mean, 100 pepperoni on a pizza, you, you're you not going to see it anywhere else. So wow. we kind of, we took a chance, but a customer loves it, you know. But people know what they're paying for, right? Okay, so you talked about cost of goods sold being around 32%. Labor is around 30%. <clears throat> and do you work with third-party apps? Yes, we do. We use our DoorDash, Uber Eats. And how is that coming them. along for you? They do actually, they, they do pretty good for us. Uh, but, you know, end of the day, they take 25%. But you could always pause them on your busy time. Yeah. And, oh, but okay. I'll, I'll definitely recommend everyone to have it. You know, kind of get your name out. People know about it. I mean, when we started, it, Uber was charging us, I think, 35%. That was back in 2017. Yeah. And they were starting 35%, but we didn't have no choice because we knew, knew in town and nobody knew about us. So then we kind of stopped using Uber and then they kind of reached out back to us and we kind of agreed to 25%. Wow. See, that's a, that's the secret that not a lot of people know is the fact that they are willing to negotiate. And that's why I make a lot of videos yes, just yes. to share these knowledge with, with my audience because I think it can really help them. An extra 5 to 10% bottom line is basically what our restauranteurs take home. And if you don't negotiate and if you don't really push for it, you're not going to have it. Right. The way I look at it, I think you should definitely team up with your other buddies. If anybody else owns a restaurant, you kind of pitch it to them that, Hey, this, this, these restaurants are all of ours. So I have buddies, they own pizza restaurants. I have buddies, they own Indian restaurants. So mm -hmm. the way we kind of do, we kind of team up and every time you got to reach out to DoorDash or Uber Eats. So right now we, we do have our prices two dollars higher on a pizza when we usually sell it but if you do do the math uh, can we kind of ran the math we only paying about 12 to 15 percent because How? there's no because there's no credit card fees if you look at it there's no workers comp you're not paying your drivers you're saving that money there's nobody calling you and you know ordering and all that so you don't have to hire extra employees for that so if you kind of break it all down with the credit card fees and everything no workers comp and all that stuff. And you don't have to send your driver out there for additional liability to make a delivery, you know? So all those things are going to, I would say, and then we have the prices $2 higher than our regular prices. You kind of bring it down, we 12 to 15%. So I think that's, that's the way I look at it. Everyone has their own kind of point of view looking at it, but. That's a very smart way of looking at it because a lot of mom and pops, what they usually do is they look at this as like, a, oh my goodness, this is killing my business. 20%. 20%, 20%. Yes, yes. Like, you know what? Yes. These guys are evil and so on and so forth. But without them, there's no way we would be able to survive yes. because you need to be able to use That's them right. and, and, and crack the code and play the game and, and not the, not the person play the game, right? Like understand the rules of the game, right. and understand how you can maneuver around that. And because at the end of the day, yeah. it's, it's a choice that you can make They're not forcing you to use them. And, and when people just kind of have this victim mentality where they feel like that, Oh, they're being strong armed into signing up for third party apps. But in reality, it is a convenience that they're doing for us. It's a love hate relationship. Learn to right, play. Right, 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 right and then play it well and exactly how you're doing it. And you do all the calculations. You're like, wow, they basically promote for you. They market for you. They do everything for you. It's worthwhile. And at the end of the day, if you were to have your own infrastructure, it would cost even more. Right. I mean, having two drivers just sitting there and you're only getting two deliveries, you know, within four hours, you pay them hourly for four hours. You can't have no employees to come in for like one hour, but you can just call an employee. Hey, come deliver a pizza for me. Then go home. You can't do that. Right. 
So all that, then if you do have a employee on a payroll, you got to pay the workers' comp. And the credit card fees are high. You know, if you look at a pizza restaurant, any restaurant, the credit card fees are there. So I think it's better to save it on something else and just kind of do a little, you know, controlling on, on your end just to kind of upsell or just add a couple items, which makes you a little extra money. And from like that 25%, it's your responsibility to bring it down to about 10 to 15%. And 10% is completely understandable. I would love to give, if they could do the whole concept for me, I would give them 15% any day. The reason is, I mean, you're busy rush hours, your phone is ringing and you can't answer all the phone calls. You're losing business on that. So I rather have people in my kitchen just kind of working faster. So the turnaround for the pizza and wings are faster. That, that's their goal is. I love uh, that. I, even till today, we still, like once a month, we have a meeting. How could we make it faster? That, that just their goal is. So. That's, you're, you're such an entrepreneur. I love that. I love that you're well, working we on your fishing. We tried. That's so, so crazy. So bottom line, you guys take them around like 8 to 10%? Um, I would around 13 13 that's really 12, 13, good margins yeah, yeah i yes, like that uh, though, and we also have pretty good uh, way to control our labor let's say uh, when we did do the delivery ourselves uh, we don't do delivery ourselves now we just use doordash to do it uh, so let's say we had two people come in we have our driver come at 11 30 we open the store at 11 so we have the driver come at 11 30 because the customer is not going to call before 11 they're going to call at 11 they want the delivery to you know it takes 20 minutes to make a pizza and stuff like that. We have a driver come at 11.30. So you save those 30 minutes from your payroll. All those things. I think once you know your numbers, you can always do better. So I always tell people, if you don't know your numbers, you're in the wrong business, you know. But the restaurant, uh, you have to know everything. It is so good. You you know exactly, and that's exactly what I preach, is is knowing your numbers. And at the end of the day, a lot of restauranteurs, yeah. they they focus on what? You know what? The, the Always, I get bombarded by emails every single day. I have this great idea. How do I market it? I have this great idea. How do I get on social media? I have this great idea. Yeah. What is a good marketing campaign? The sexy stuff, the stuff that actually gets people going. Those are the stuff that people want to focus on. Rarely do people come and ask me and consult with me about, hey, these are my numbers. Is it right? Is it on par? Is it not on par? How can I maximize and, and get 15% take home? No one ever does that. So I think that's what sets you apart. And that's why you're going from two locations to another location. Uh, congratulations on your third location. Um, no, thank you. That's, that's amazing. And you're saying that you're going to have two more at the end of the year. What's your strategy in opening these locations? Well, so we always, uh, right now, as of right now, we're trying to keep it two, two months apart. So we open one location, uh, which, is, which is already open this week. Uh, then after two months, we can open one more. Then another two months, we can open one more. So that way, we could have one store on its feet, running and everything, and all the staff is trained. That's when we're going to open the other one. So I'd rather sit on the store, pay rent, just sitting on it, rather than opening all of them at once and just not knowing, you know, what's going to happen. So it's always to do a perfect opening. That's, that's what I believe in. <clears throat> so why, why a, a lot of people are, are confused and a lot of people are like, yo, Wilson, is this a good time to open up a restaurant? It's COVID. And I tell them, this is a great time to open a restaurant if and only if you have the right offer, a quality product, and you know what you're doing. And this is a That's great right. time to do so. Tell me why you think it is a great time and why you're doing There's it. There's a couple reasons. I mean, first thing, you got to know your food. And then you also kind of do kind of get an idea on your social media. Then people, how much, you know, if you read your Yelp reviews, you kind of follow up on Instagram. People, if they like your food, they'll post about you. Hey, I would love to have this pizza in our town, you know, this and that. So once you know that, and I think it's the perfect time to get a, you know, your lease agreements kind of the way you want it. You know, better, you know, rent. And uh, you could also get a lot of the, you know, money back from the landlord. Because I mean, a lot of people are scared to do business. And I think it's the perfect time to, you know, if you know your product is good, just kind of get a perfect offer, you know, maybe. The rent, uh, we, on a couple of locations, we got a great rent. So, which I think if it, there was no COVID, we would be end up paying more. Totally. And I think that's, that's spot on. Like me as a landlord and me as a tenant as well, I definitely understand the fear that people go through. And even myself, I'm afraid. I'm mm -hmm. afraid that my tenants are not going to be paying on time. And that's why I'm right. going to be much more lenient with, with the terms because I'm like, hey, I'll be happy just have someone yeah. coming through and taking care of my unit. So I don't have to just pay my mortgage every single month. 
And like, I was actually able to help uh, one of my mentees, my client negotiate six months of free rent just earlier. And I'm like, damn, that's the, like, this is the golden time. It is. Uh, one of, one of the, the first location we got, uh, we got our money back from the landlord. It was like, he gave us, uh, I think, $8 a square foot. And now, you know, we're in the point in life, you know, once you kind of do, like I say, learn your numbers, you learn the business. And one of the landlord, I got 30 bucks a square foot from him. So just to build out as a TI money. Wow. So you can't go wrong with that. So, I mean, I'm just sharing this with you so people could, there's nothing wrong with trying it. When you're signing a lease, just ask for it. They go, the worst thing could happen, they could say no. That's it. Dude, I, I love it. I love all these nuggets you're dropping with us because it's that's exactly what it is, is if you don't ask, you're never going to get it. And a lot you're of people are afraid it. to ask because it's like, it seems rude. That's what a lot yeah. of feedback that I get. It's like, it seems rude. It's saying that you're asking. No, we took a lot of money. Even our stores, we, we want to build nice stores. Uh, so the landlord know what we bring to the table. We kind of show them a plan and we can draw everything up. Hey, you know, this is what we're going to be doing to your building. And, you know, even if it doesn't work out for us, we'll leave, but you'll have a great restaurant. You know, you, you could always be able to someone else, but hopefully it doesn't happen. But hmm. when he, when he knows, he knows you're going to put a lot of money in it. And you know, that's your, your look, your food and customer service. I mean, if you got those three things, right, you can't go wrong with the restaurant. Business. Totally. Totally. I love your big plans. I love the nuggets that you're sharing with us for the people that actually want to follow your journey of people that are in California that want to reach out to you, that want to try your pizza. How can they find you? They could find us on the Instagram, the Curry Pizza Company. So it has all the information for locations and uh, for food pictures, whatever they want to look at it. So Perfect, guys. It's in the link below. So if you guys want to check DJ Mali out, definitely go in the link below. Check him out. Reach out to them if you guys have any questions. Once again, I really appreciate your time. I know it's super valuable. You're building up new shops no, and you have you. family to take care of. Thank you once again for jumping onto this. Thanks. I think like the nuggets you're sharing really inspires people to, to let them know it's okay to go through the hardship and it is okay. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's fine. It's like, go out there and go and build your dreams. Right. Uh, at the beginning when we did it for the first restaurant, we threw, threw away about, I would say about almost 20, 30 bags of flour just to get the you know, right dough we wanted. So every night we'll make it. Boom, it's not right. Let's trash this. Let's do it again. Let's trash this. Let's do it again. And it was a process. Now, me and my brother in law, he's on a team with me. And then I have a buddy, his name is Nav, and he's on a team with me. They were getting tired of me. He was like, hey, dude, you just come in and tell us, hey, throw the door away. I was like, if it's not perfect. We're not going to sell it. So I always tell the people working in the kitchen, if you can't eat it, don't serve it. I love that. I love that final okay. nugget you're sharing with us. That's what people need to know. It's like they're, they can yes. quality food, marketing comes last right quality yes. quality yeah. quality location 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 know your numbers know your customers and then it is yeah. the marketing yep great stuff once again thank you so much dj cal really appreciate you being on this all right appreciate it thank you Walter.